Hey everyone, we have a visitor today. We're out at Jay's Homestead and this is the most awesome place ever. If you ever want to know a true homesteader, we have found a true homesteader in Jay. True off-grid <laughs> Yes, off-grid too, yes. Since 2002. How much land do you live on here? We have 60 acres. 60. More okay. or less, that's the way land works. They, mm -hmm. they tax you right. on 60 acres whether you have it or not. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they, they don't, they don't they, tax you more or less. They, they, they take some for the road, you know, they, however, you know, for whatever the surveyor mm -hmm. said it is, that's what you pay taxes. And how would you describe this, this land as it was raw when you moved on to it? I mean, uh, describe uh, the, 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 the climate, the, the you know, the it uh, was, geography. It was, Oak, forest, and cow pasture. Okay. Um, okay. Water? We had no, there was a damaged pond that didn't hold water. The damaged dam, pond? Yeah. Okay. The dam was had been breached, and so there was no water. We mm -hmm. had to haul water in 55 gallon barrels, mm -hmm. and I've been here alone most of the time. You've lived here 17 years? Since 2002, June so, of 2002. Okay, 2002. And what did you start with when you got Nothing. here? Nothing. 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 Okay. So what there was, was not even a gate to get on the property. Okay. So what was the first thing you did? Cut the barbed wire fence. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the first thing you built. <laughs> cut the um, barbed wire fence. It's the truth. Um, uh, Steve went to cut it, and he's a city boy, so he didn't know. And he goes to cut the last, and I'm ducking. I'm screaming, no, oh, no and I'm it's ducking behind. Spring on you, yeah. I, I ducked behind, and it whiplashed, and don't don't cut barbed wire fences. <laughs> Yeah, they'll spring on you. Um, we built the barn, and we lived in the barn from July to October. Okay. And uh, it was cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was ice forming from us breathing, you know, sleeping at night. And we moved. I moved into the house. We had to put the bed in through the wall before the roof was completed. Mm -hmm. And it was warmer inside with a 6 by 8 hole in the roof because I could have the wood stove going. Mm -hmm. It was warmer upstairs than it was in the barn. Oh, yeah. I mean, we slept under covers with a plastic sheet, mm -hmm. you know, to help stop the wind from blowing through. Right. Um, but we're hardcore. We do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Sounds like it. So, no electricity. For a year, we had no electricity. Mm -hmm. Refrigeration? Nothing. For 10 years. For more than 10 years. No refrigeration for 10 years? Yeah. Okay. Meaning, because somebody might be thinking air conditioning. No, there's no. Oh no, no, I'm, yes, not, I'm no, referring yes. to no food refrigeration. Yes, yeah. yeah. It started in childhood for sure. Yeah. Um, my grandmother and grand, my father's parents lived on the farm. They raised most of their food. He worked construction because you have to buy, buy nails and you have to buy salt and you have to, you know. Mm -hmm. And she basically ran the farm by herself and raised children by herself because he was working sometimes out of state. My dad was born in California because of the depression, because they had to leave right. Oklahoma. You're like the Jodes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a well, lot of people. Sure, a lot of people <laughs> in here in Oklahoma. You and bet. So it's like there's a certain amount since I grew up hearing these stories and I actually saw it being done. And we had the whole family sit around canning peaches, and you learn how to cut off every little bad spot and save every little good bit that you can. Mm -hmm. um, and that these women did this, and they raised huge families. Mm -hmm. And you know, there were some malnutrition issues that, as I grew up learning, I learned to recognize some malnutrition issues. Mm -hmm. And I, I was really blessed that my mom was a really well educated person, that she always had books, and she always had information. And she's the one who taught me, like, you, when you're sorting your beans, you don't eat the ones that are cracked or the skin is flaking mm -hmm. off. Because if there is mold in that storage, those mold spores can get in that little crack, and then you get mycotoxins, mm -hmm. which can make you very, they can make you food. sick. You bet. So it does matter. If it's not pretty, you don't eat it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, that <laughs> makes, that's, that's a good but rule a lot of thumb, are right? That. Yeah. So I grew up learning from my grandmother, my great grandmother. Um, and they were raising 10 kids off of their gardens. You know, they did all their canning. They had their cellars. They put up all their food. 
I got to listen to my grandmother tell me stories, I'm gonna get emotional, about the times when she went to the cellar and took the last jar of food out. Mm -hmm. And she had eight kids to feed. Mm -hmm. um, and she would tell me that then you start eating chickens. And I taught, I learned all the order, you know, of priority. And I actually heard real life stories, like on Little House in the Prairie where they butcher the horse mm -hmm. because there's no other food. What, what caused you to live this life? I mean, because you didn't always live it. Well, you I did as I, a child. I had that exposure, and mm -hmm. that's where happiness was. Mm -hmm. That was where the happiness was. You lived elsewhere, so uh -huh. were you doing that, you know, Garden. rabbit race thing, right. Right. though? No, me, I you didn't. know, ever, you know, being on um, the wheel in the city, or? I had to work at a Lowe's, a home improvement, home improvement center for a year or two. Well, less than a year. God is good to me. I didn't have to stay there. <laughs> for me, town life and city life is just weird. It's weird. <laughs> it's just weird. You know, uh, disposable stuff, uh, not having any concern for the effect it has long term. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I, I go, we, we joke about when I have a hot water on the faucet in town, Oh, what witchcraft is this? <laughs> you know? Witchcraft. We haven't had hot water out of a faucet in 17 years. Mm -hmm. We have to heat it on the stove. Mm -hmm. and, and we have a, a propane hot water heater on demand one that we could put in. And we just never got around to doing it. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's just as easy to heat up a pan of water. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. How many people are living in town and they hate their jobs and they hate their neighbors and they're miserable? Me. And they're, they're, they're caught in the traffic <laughs> driving home and Me. they hate it. It's like I was saying earlier, how much would a person pay to not have to do that? Right. Right. So every time I walk outside and I take a deep breath and I don't smell anybody's laundry products, how much is that worth? Mm -hmm. When you start raising these animals, the real purpose is for when you can't go get something at the store. You're talking about how do you make that transition, you know, from the time you wake up in the morning. What if I couldn't buy this? What are you going to do? You know, if you can't brush your teeth, if you can't buy a toothbrush, what are you going to do? Well, I know I can go get a twig and I can hammer it with a hammer and make it kind of frizzy on the ends and that'll work if I need to. Or floss or whatever. You know, one of the things that I appreciate about you, Jay, is that you have this very um, practical sense about you. You know, you said you said a few minutes ago, if my chicken has bumble fit, I don't treat it, I kill it. Yeah. Why go to all the trouble when something can be handled so much more simply? Yes. You know. Compare that protein value in this injured bird. Compare that's cook it, feed it to the pig. Mm -hmm. Because going to buy protein to feed your animals is outrageously high. Meat in the store costs outrageously amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, when you grow it yourself, most of your input is your time and your labor. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that labor was putting up the fence mm -hmm. that you hate. Yes. <laughs> because I hate fences. Yeah. Um, my chickens, sometimes we will lose. I've never had a real disease issue except years ago we had something in the water that was killing all the day-old chicks. When they drank the water, they would die. Mm. And so I had to bring all of the chicks in the house and keep them away from the water. And eventually it passed or everybody developed immunity. But I just had to keep them from drinking water outside, whatever it was. It could have been something a wild bird came and drank out of that water. Mm -hmm. um, but we got through that. I've studied herbs and how you know what things will work and I will go and experiment and try things because doing it perfectly isn't what it's about. It's mm -hmm. about are you going to learn and do better? You know, you keep doing better and you keep doing more things and enjoying your life. Mm -hmm. Basically, I function here as a full time security guard so people don't come and steal stuff. You know, mm -hmm. and I keep an eye on is everybody fat enough? Is anybody losing too much weight? Do mm -hmm. they, they need more food or are they sick? Mm -hmm. So I had to learn animal husbandry so that I know if somebody's sick, I know to isolate them and watch them. So it's like you run a secure daycare center. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
But you do have to have a huge wealth of knowledge with this. Yeah, it is. It's it's not some. You don't just read just one book and have it all figured out. I mean, because you have to know for your solar. You mm -hmm. have to know how to troubleshoot problems with your solar or troubleshoot problems and with... The electricity is mostly Steve's thing because mm -hmm. he's worked with semis mm -hmm. most of his life. He understands wiring. Mm -hmm. You know, he can he, he has that instinct to develop to figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of scared of it. <laughs> yeah. um, my dad died from an electrical accident, so mm -hmm. I just have this built-in fear of it. But I've done better. It took me a long time to understand you could put two positives together that wouldn't blow up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, at and times. Now, and now, now that I understand it, um, if you can load batteries into a flashlight correctly, you can learn solar. Mm -hmm. sure. You can do it yourself. Yeah. My my husband is an over the road truck driver, so when he came in off the road, he would bring a barrel of water. Yeah. And there have been times when I literally was making coffee with algae water with mosquito larvae in it. But I learned how to do that and not get sick. So how did that taste? I'm curious. That's why you make coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you make coffee, I'm saying yeah. I'm drinking. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I learned from early age, you know, if the water has a certain viscosity to it, the, the red flag goes off in your mind and you, mm. you have to do something else to it. I love chlorine. Chlorine is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that you bring up, I think, an interesting concept, and that is... Life need not necessarily be as sanitary as exactly. we make it. A person can go more than 30 days without washing themselves with water if they do decent, basic hygiene. Sure. Um, you don't have to take a shower every day. You don't have to wash your hair every day. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting that, we, that, that society tells us and we yeah. tell ourselves that we have to. You know, if you're going to go into town or whatever, there's always the um, the uh, resistance maybe to that if you've been living off-grid for a while because yeah. you don't want to appear as a bumpkin. <laughs> you want your clothes to look clean, mm -hmm. definitely, if you go out around other people. Yeah. Um, I've had people come around me and they smell like soap and detergent mm -hmm. and I have multiple chemical sensitivity issues mm -hmm. and I get sick. Are you okay with us, by the way? Yeah, I, I, I immediately noticed that there is a, mm -hmm. maybe a laundry set or something. I yeah. don't condition it. But um, I would have said something if it was a problem. Okay. I actually have to wear a charcoal mask, an N, or is it a P95, something like that. When mm -hmm. it has a layer of charcoal in it, I yeah. don't count it. Yeah. A few years ago, a lady in uh, a Hancock's fabric store, I had chemical burns in my lungs, and I was sick for three weeks. Wow. That's something so, else. She's going to teach me how to butcher a chicken. I hope I'm not too queasy. Uh, six, eight months ago, we visited a place. Uh, it's a, he's a farm and he sells livestock to, you know, individuals. Yeah. And they can butcher them right there on site. That's what we, that's what we do. That's yeah. What we do. They were butchering a couple of roosters. And those roosters were so stressed out. I mean, they were crying for their lives because they knew what was happening. And it occurs to me, that's really not how you want to dispatch your animals. No, I really believe it, it affects the texture of the meat. Uh -huh. It's it tough. Yeah. The only tough pig we've ever had was hunted. Okay. And mm -hmm. I tried to tell him, don't chase the pigs. Mm -hmm. They uh -huh. were afraid. Strangers were here. Um, some babies had been sold. And they <clears throat> turned them loose before they calmed down. So they mm -hmm. were running the acreage and then someone actually hunted one. That's the only tough pig I've ever had. Yeah. The stress. Yeah. yeah. We had, uh, during the drought, I don't know which year it was, but I have a photograph somewhere in the other computer of a thermometer inside of a huge, beautiful growing uh, tomato plant. And the temperature inside this green tomato plant in the shade was 122 degrees. Mm -hmm. In the house upstairs, it was 130 something degrees. Mm -hmm. um, the two little windows we had weren't getting all the humidity out and there was actually condensation dripping from those stairs. Mm -hmm. um, when it came to the heat of the day, there was a little battery operated fan and lay on a cot with wet towels draped over yeah. until that four hours, four or five hours heat of the day passed. Mm -hmm. And uh, unless you've been in that situation, you don't know what hot really is. Mm -hmm. So back to like the food stuff. When you said you, what, what did you do? Because for us, that was always, well, we have to go get ice. We have yeah. to go get ice. Yeah. Um, so I how did you, meat. what would, did you do? 
I would buy meat and salt it, put a layer of salt on it. Mm -hmm. Most of the salt flavor will come out if you wash it before mm -hmm. you cook it. On a story, a dog, one of our dogs grabbed one of my steaks one day and I grabbed him and took it back. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, he, he about had it halfway. I took it back. I washed it off and I cooked it and I ate it because um, mm -hmm. even though I am in a situation where if I had to, I could walk to a neighbor's a quarter mile away in almost any direction. Um, you know, it there would be a certain amount of embarrassment, you know, in these modern times to be in that situation. But I also was well prepared when we moved here. I, I knew what I was getting into. Mm -hmm. How would you describe your subsistence level here? I mean, uh, you've lived here for um, 17 have, years. We have gone three months, more than 90 days without buying anything. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, 90 it was, days. It wasn't uh, good weather. You know, mm -hmm. It wasn't winter time, mm -hmm. but we could have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done it before. I can do it again. How long, I mean, in a pinch, do you, th do you think you could go? The three months or for oh, as a long? Right now, mm -hmm. and I'm really lazy and I haven't been really working at it. Oh, probably two months. Two months. Yeah. I don't have a close family. So I learned to be able to take care of myself. I learned how to be on my own. And some people can't handle that. And it isn't that they can't do the other homesteading stuff, but being alone is really hard for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm and I just go get busy with something else. And it doesn't bother you to be alone, but you still maintain a social life of sorts. I try to. And and how do you do that living out Mostly here? Mostly internet. Okay. <laughs> Mostly internet. We got internet so we could have some interaction with people uh -huh. and it's you know way better than spending gas money to drive to a bar in town. Sure. Just to hang out with people mm -hmm. you don't like anyway. Yeah. Um, I don't drink, don't smoke, don't do drugs. Mm -hmm. Been all around that as a Growing up, and it's just that doesn't work for me. It's empty. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It gets empty and shallow real quick. Mm -hmm. What do you least like about it? Being cold in the winter. Being cold in the winter. I don't like being cold. Okay. If radiant floor heating had been available at the home center stores when we built this house, this cabin, mm -hmm. it would be in here. But you couldn't go and just buy that back then. Okay. We are going to put it in this floor. We've already got the tubing in and we built a rocket mass heater mm -hmm. and all I had was information off the internet. I, I'd never seen one in person and I got it working the first time, mm -hmm. you know, that our first fire up, it was back drafting smoke in here. And I had to do a lot of thinking and imagine it in my head and all the system and everything with everything I'd seen. And we took it apart and made some adjustments into the reburn chamber. And it worked perfectly after that. Mm -hmm. But I got tired of having to come in here every 30 minutes and put twigs in it. Yeah. So we're going to tore it down. We're going to make it a batch burn that loads from the outside. Oh, nice. Great. Then I will have zone 10 in my greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Tropical. And folks, by the way, she's, this, uh, this greenhouse is filled with citrus. So, And we are in, is it okay if we say where you're at? I mean, not the town, but the region. We're, we're in the vicinity of Shawnee, Oklahoma. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, not a place known for citrus growing. And she does have a lot of really nice looking citrus trees. She does. Growing in And I, I consider me still learning citrus. I mm -hmm. mean, it's, they're heavy feeders. Mm -hmm. It is unreal. Um, if I had to make my own fertilizer, I would be butchering chickens to put into the citrus trees. Mm -hmm. Because they need that much nitrogen and the fertility and stuff it's, yeah. it's a challenge well jay with your permission we'd like to we'd like to interview you some more I on different to. topics because you are a wealth of knowledge i want to be the grandma who has who gets to teach other people well, like i learned well, from my grandma we, we talked do. Us into it. i know <laughs> yes